Welcome to the Daily Freedomist. This is a test episode. This is your host, P.T. Goy, and this is news and intelligence for free people. Accurate, timely, being free to prosper and live as you choose isn't something that just happens. You make it happen. But to make it happen, you need to be armed with insights, knowledge, resources, and credible analysis of the events shaping your world and your life. And that's what I hope to do here today, in part. And if you go to freedomist.com, you can read all of the stories that we're going to talk about here today. But, well, you will get this opinion there because I'll post this there too. So our stories today, we got racist professors. We've got uh, DNCCCP and the National GOP alignment. We got professor who survived murderous communist regime. Has some things to say today. Whitmer, what did she do? One of her goons got a little uppity and then quit. We'll I'll find out what happened there. Then we got Trump's Gab account. Well, we'll tell you about his Gab account, what's going on with Gab and Biden's defense choice. <laughs> oh, if you see the picture, if you're watching the uh, video version of this podcast, you'll see the picture of our gentleman here. <laughs> defense choice, defense choice not look like he has out the defense choice at all. Biden moves to end Yemeni resistance. Ah, yes. And Biden America signals token resistance to Master Z. Master Z. That's what we're going to be talking about here today on the Daily Freedomist with uh, PJ Gordon. So let's get to our first story here. This is our first story here. Let's see. Racist professors. Racist professors it is. Look at that. Racist professors want writing skills sabotage because they believe only white people. Right, right. That's right. Only the white peoples. Right, white. Right, white, right, right, white. Two racist college professors who hate both black and white folk have decided that in order to destroy the white race, they must destroy uniform and competent writing. They're like the anti-Shakespeare. You know, Shakespeare standard. Never mind. The real reason they want to destroy standards in general is to create a culture of idiots that lack the basic discernment skills. I mean basic. Very, very basic discernment skills. To know when they're openly being lied to. Like these two clowns are doing right here. But it reveals much about how these racists view the race they allege to be protecting. It's a, it's a creepy kind of fetishistic racism. Fetishistic? Fetishistic? I like fetishistic better. Fetishistic, which is wrong, but still, it's better. Fetishistic racism in and of its own, in addition to the fetishistic. Fetishistic. I think it should be repeated more times. Racism, they also reveal they just don't have faith in non-white folk being able to compete with white folk in competent writing. So they want test scores to reflect effort, not results, which sounds like a fascist commie to me. And this is from, uh, let's see, this is the college fix. Uh, this is, oh, let me make sure I got that right. Is this the college fix? College fix? Yes, I thought so. I got it right. I got it right. The college fix. Ah, two writing professors at St. Olaf College. Oh, there's a name. Oh, St. Olaf. Oh. Oh, don't they sound like two people that come from a place of uh, struggle. Of struggle. Yeah, amazing how many wealthy people are signing up for this garbage. Two writing professors at St. Olaf College are calling on their faculty, peers, and campus writing tutors to prioritize what they call labor-based grading. (laughs) Labor-based grading. So what they're going to do, essentially, is they're going to get writing assignments. They're going to give them out, and then they're going to put a grade. They're going to say labor-based, but it's not going to be labor-based. It's going to be the white folk gets the heavy foot on the neck. The Asian folk gets an even bigger foot on the neck. And the black folk get fetishized. I don't know what happens to the rest of you because according to these people, only whites and blacks exist. And the world is defined by whiteness and everything else. Pretty pretty white supremacists of them, honestly. Well, it's dialectical white supremacism, but that's another 
that's another story. So they're calling it labor-based grading, which puts a de-emphasis on calling out and correcting traditional writing errors. Yeah. Uh, this approach to, to responding to student writing prioritizes students' process and growth instead of a single standard of writing. Dudes, dudes, we live in a society. Well, sort of. I mean, we, we, we're in an a interregnum period of time, so it's kind of a competition for society. But let's say we live in a society, single standard of writing. If you don't have a single standard of writing, you don't have a society. And I can guarantee you these folks, once they destroy what is, if they succeed, and I think they might, then they'll have a single standard of writing. I can assure you, no nation state, no civilization, no culture can exist unless it has single uniform standards in some critical areas, especially when it comes to communications. And this is uh, Bridget Draxler. Oh, Bridget. Oh, Bridget Draxler. Do let's check at what this uh, patrician lady, Bridget Draxler. Oh, Bridget. Do let's check you out. Bridget Draxler's profile. St. No Love's College. Look at her. Look at this woman. Look at this white woman who's going to save the black race by assuring that we have no standards in writing because she is a racist. This is the face of a racist. She hates black people. She fetishizes them, but she hates them. She thinks that they're too dumb to write in a standardized way as if only black people or as if only white people have mastered the English language. Are you an idiot? There's been many, many great, great black writers through the ages. You idiots. And, and she's a writing professor. Mm -hmm. And uh, who's the other one here? This Diana LeBlanc. Diana. Let's check out Diana LeBlanc. What kind of story you got going for us there, Diana LeBlanc is. Diana LeBlanc. Oh, it's a Facebook profile. I don't care about this. I don't care about this. I'm not going to do that. There we go. Diana LeBlanc. Ah. Is, it, is this you? Is this you, Diana? Are you? Are you? Wow. Call your county schools. Diana LeBlanc. I don't know if you're the right Diana LeBlanc. All right. Maybe you're going to escape my scrutiny, Diana. But you haven't escaped my scrutiny, Diana. Such a method. The two argued with decenter white upper middle class education that's them they are white upper middle class they're lying to you they're not trying to get rid of white upper middle class they're trying to get rid of white middle and lower class they're citadelian wannabes they're rich white folk who want to step on the neck of poor white folk and they're willing to th throw black people in front of them in order to save them from competing with their quote-unquote own kind because they don't really view black people as being a threat because they're racist. Let's get to the next story. That was cheerful. After National GOP exposed as DNC CCP sympathizers, will the state GOP parties fight the fascist? Hey, hey Joe, hey, Joe. Don't worry, Joe Biden, you shouldn't be afraid of Joe Biden because he doesn't exist. He's a corpse. He's a, uh, I guess he's a sedated animal corpse that they just track out there and uh, they, they juice him up full of all kinds of wonderful chemicals to have those, those rare moments when he has to perform, which they try to keep to a minimum. So he's innocent. He's not even there. So it's not Joe. It's the collective Biden or the, uh, as I like to call it, uh, the mass mailer uh, collective presidency known as the Biden. The Biden. Again and again and again. The National GOP makes it clear they are token opposition only. With the hell of 2020 and the death of the American Republic on January 6, 2021, when the U.S. House illegally, subjectively speaking, certified a sweepstakes mailer election, giving us the illegal mass mailer collective presidency known as the Biden. And that should be always what you call him. Never call that the president because that's not a president. That's a mass mailer collective presidency known as the Biden. And a new nation, Biden America. Are the state GOP parties going to fight back against this illegal takeover of the American state by a Chinese Communist Party backed corporate state called the DNC? And how long will be will I 
How long will I? How long will you? How long will we be free to make such a claims against this state, the Biden America state? Well, we shall see. We're going to stay on the air as long as they let us. But I would rather see my readers build microfactories than waste their time on politics, which is what got us here in the first place. It is far better to leave their control than to inject any part of your mind, body, spirit into this corrupt, child-endangering system we now see before us. And mark my words, watch, watch the death, the suicide rates of children skyrocket out of control. Watch rape of children skyrocket out of control within the next year, two years at the latest. Pray for our children at risk and build. Build your own nations here and now. Not nation states, nations, they're different. Uh, amongst the soon-to-be, from their own self-sabotaging moves, not ours, ruins. And this is from the American thinker who says, Will the state save us from a corrupted GOP? And they say, The sad fact is too many in the GOP are comfortably ensconced in the swamp of national politics. It's not national politics. It's Chinese Communist Party power. It is the, the wealth of China that calls the DNC and the GOP to roll over and play dead for the CCP. They're not ideologues, folks. They don't care about communism, socialism, fascism, anyism. All they care about is winning. And they'll adopt whatever ideology, whatever belief, whatever vehicle of power puts them in a position where they put their foot on your neck and you can't fairly compete. That's what they're all about. And China gives them the opportunity to make tons of money overseas from a captive audience of three or four times bigger than ours so that they no longer have to serve our markets the free market is dead capitalism doesn't exist because they don't have to adhere to the market pressures when they get their wealth and their power from china and not america america is the place where they get to make people in their image china is the country they serve america is the country that they make and they make with brutality animal force and animal ignorance so uh, uh, I, I guess I'll just leave it there I think I've said more than American thinker did so thank you American thinker but next story professor who survived murderous communist regime warns wokeness far more fascist and dangerous than communism so a professor from Romania says woke ideology more harmful to education than communism and this is from I get this right. There's another one. No, this is legal insurrection. Make sure I get you right. Legal insurrection. So, from legal insurrection, Michael a chance. In my position as a professor of mathematics at Princeton, I have witnessed the decline of universities and cultural institutions that they embraced political ideology at the expense of rigorous scholarship. Until recently, this past summer, really, I had naively thought that the STEM discipline would be spared from this ideological takeover. They don't need to make bridges anymore, so you know. If you don't need to make bridges anymore, if you don't need to worry about your customers, then you can design bridges made with woke math. People will die when you start building bridges with woke math. He continues, I was wrong. Attempts to deconstruct mathematics, deny its objectivity, accuse it of racial bias, and infuse it with political ideology have become more and more common, perhaps even at your child's elementary school. It's happening right now, right now, across our schools. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody seems to care, even though right now there are school teachers that willingly will talk in front of tiny children tiny human beings with tiny impressionable minds these are these are modeling minds these are the minds that hear and model what they hear and what you are going to model is bloodthirsty violence and oppression you're going to model violent hate towards your fellow human being when you teach children that they have sin skins or they have pussy skins they're either sinners or pussies their parents are either bloodthirsty, powerful killers, or they're weak pieces of shit. Either way, children go home feeling like their parents are just jokes. They have no respect for the parents because the teachers, the teachers are the ones telling their children to murder their children, to, to murder their parents. That's essentially what they're teaching these kids. This is violence. This is, this is... This is the Cultural Revolution of 1968 in China when Chairman Mao 
because he controlled the media the way the DNC CCP controls the media. He controlled the message, a bloodthirsty message that said the people that came before you were evil and should die. And so the youth rose up and they killed their old. They killed the professors. They killed their own parents. A whole generation of, of Chinese people were murdered by Chinese people because of the very ideology that's being taught in our American schools. And this guy is recognizing it. The phenomenon is part of what's being uh, dubbed the Great Awakening. No, this is the Great Nazi. This is when you finally see, as I, I, as I, I, I don't know if I covered the story or if I'm going to cover the story. I may cover the story. This is what you're going to finally see. That the 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 fascism of the Nazis is exactly the same as the fascism of the communists. The difference between Nazism and communism is essentially this. Nazis tell you this is for the strong. They're fascists. They are, they're for the strong. They're, they want to build a system that allows the strong to get to the top. The communists also build the same system. The only difference is the communists lie to you. They lie through their bloody teeth. And they say, no, 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 we're going to design a system that is going to give power to the weak, to the proletariat or whatever. I, I mean, Mark, Marx, Marx wouldn't have wanted you to give it to the poor. Mao used the poor. Marx thought you, used the, you should use the middle class. But either way, both of them end up in the same place. And the same place is a tiny number of powerful human beings totally control the lives of everyone else. And in order to control people, you will have to murder them because you'll have to make bold, certain claims that you can never back up, ever. And the only way that you'll be able to protect yourself from your own lies is by murdering human beings to do it. And that's just what these mindless drones plan on doing. As others have explained powerfully, this ideology incubated in academia where it indoctrinated plenty of bright minds. They're not very bright if they were indoctrinated by this. They wanted it. They wanted, they hungered for the blood and the, and the flesh of children. And this, and this brought it to them. It then migrated through those true believers, no, no, no true believers, into the, the true believers are the idiots that came afterwards, into our important cultural, religious, and political institutions. Now it's affecting some of the country's most prominent businesses. Unlike the traditional totalitarianism practiced by former communist countries like the Romania I grew up in, this version is soft. It enforces its ideology not by gelling, dis oh no, it, it's going to gel dissenters. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. It's already done, and it'll, it'll do it. it. It'll keep going up. Or physically eliminating. Oh, no, 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 no. No, they're working up to that. This is We're in Nazi Germany, 1933. The Germans just took power. The Nazis just took power, folks. And this is... Anybody speaking out against this regime right now is pretty much putting themselves at risk. As surely as we're putting ourselves at risk, but we willingly do it. Because we would rather die than roll over for this... this, this pedophilic ideology, this dark, twisted, demented ideology. And apparently this Romanian professor, he agrees, although I don't think still that he can believe that it is going to be as horrible as it is about ready to get. And our next story, did Whitmer reward her disgruntled health star on the way out? Hundreds of thousands of dollars suggest, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. DNC CCP Governor Whitmer, or should we all? By the way, that's just anytime you refer to the DNC, always at CCP. They're, they're, they're frenemies, but they're mostly friends. There's a little enemy there, though. Don't, don't get me wrong. The DNC people are, are bloodthirsty killer snakes that will betray the CCP the first chance they get. So, so it's it's these are these are two wolves aligned with each other. But the CCP is the strong one, and the DNC is the weak one. They depend much more on the CCP, and now they're totally beholden to the CCP because the CCP they know damn well what happened in this election, and they're behind it. And the DNC, yeah, they know. The CCP they could turn over documents anytime and end these people. DNC CCP Governor Whitmer, or should we call her by her fantasy name, Chairman Whitmer? Must have been caught given a, must, uh, might have been caught giving a golden parachute to one of her most loyal, loyal strongmen, Robert Gordon. Not so loyal anymore. 
her health czar that justified and gave cover to Whitmer's unconstitutional and terroristic shutdowns of American citizens. I think at one point, Gordon maybe had some second thoughts. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe. Got some second thoughts. Like, I don't want to do this. And then just like that. And for that, it was allegedly... He, 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 he abruptly resigned, but allegedly he was really forced to leave and offered an illegal, allegedly, allegedly illegal severance package to placate the disgruntled strongman of Whitmer. And this is from Red State. According to the Detroit News, Whitmer's administration paid Gordon a pile of cash in a deal that required silence from both parties. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer's administration agreed to pay former State Health Department Director Robert Gordon $155,000 in a separation deal that also required the two sides to maintain confidentiality about the circumstances that led to his abrupt departure. The agreement is the clearest evidence yet that the split between Gordon, a central figure in the state's response to COVID-19, and Whitmer was not amicable, and it shows the Democratic administration used taxpayer funds to ease his departure. On February 22nd, one month after Gordon resigned without explanation, he and Mark Toten, Whitmer's chief lawyer, signed a four-page agreement. The state agreed to pay Gordon a total that represents nine months of salary and health benefits, and he released the state from any potential legal claims. What a, what a great guy. I guess he had a bit of a conscience, but not so much that he would actually stand up. Just enough so he can get his golden parachute and uh, head on down the road. You know, in Germany, everybody asks the question, what did you do during the war? Well, we're in the middle of a war, folks. And in the end of that war, there's a coalition of people. Some of you are conservative, libertarians, all kinds of folks. Some of you are Democrats, like not DNC, CCP, but Democrats. Some of you are a lot of things. And we're going to find one another. We're going to find who the people are that are Americans, that believe in the Bill of Rights and, and, and not the Bill of Man. That, that gives man the power to be priest king overall. This is what they want to restore. This is a battle between the Bronze Age and the current age. And they want us take, to take us back to Sargon of Akkad, where they will have some priest king that will dictate to the masses from their moral supremacist heights exactly how we should live our lives or die, whatever the case might be. Trump's Gab account hacked along with 15 thousand others i'm going out on a big limb on this one folks a lot of speculation on this one never really know what happened most likely maybe we will probably not it appears reasonable to assume that the dnc ccp is not liking gab that's my speculation so much so that an op was really run it was there was an op run clearly because there was 15,000 accounts hacked that may or may not be the work of our own government or other bad and ally governments like China. In this op, they hacked the Gab accounts, targeting Trump first and foremost, in a clear bid to destabilize the alternative to SJW fascist owned platform. You know, SJW fascism is a great phrase because it really captures how it is that this movement so crystallized, like China is doing right now. China is the exact model. They're both using one another. You even hear China using the same SJW language to attack the American people. Same thing. Same language. These SJWs, they, they talk like Chinese Communist Party uh, hacks who want to, to murder Americans. So uh, it's reasonable to believe that these folks are, are working in cahoots because they do the same freaking game plan. If our government were involved, folks, you'll likely never know. But... Even if it isn't, you can bet this op was run by one of the DNC Frankensteins scattered across this country in Antifa HQs. And these are green shirts, by the way, as they like to be called, or at least they should be. You, you get it right. There's brown shirts from the Nazis. These are green shirts because they're like, you know, green fascism. Maybe you can just call them green fascism. Green fascism and red fascism. Red fascism is Hitler. Green fascism is DNC CCP. Yeah, from Ars Technica, Dan Gooden, the founder of the Far Right Social. Look, look at this, Ars Technica. You, what did you do during the war, Ars Technica? You went after alternatives to the not to the green Nazis, didn't you? You went after the alternatives to the green Nazis, didn't you, Ars Technica? Dan Gooden, the writer of the article, will remember what you did during the war, Dan. You aided and abetted the enemy. The founder of the far-right social media platform, Gab, said that the private account of former President Donald Trump was among the data stolen and publicly released by hackers. 
This is an op. This is a government, most likely. I mean, I have no proof. So, folks, this is just my speculation. But it makes the most sense to me. This is a government op. They are, they are literally, they are desperate to cut off all access, all ways of human beings finding out what lying, violent, oppressive pieces of filth these animals truly are. And anybody who supports them at this point, don't watch our videos. Don't. Just, just don't. Just go away. Next story. Biden's defense choice is growing hairier and nastier by the day. Hello, yeah, look at this guy. This old gentleman with the little glasses. Hello, dear. I'm going to be the defense secretary. Yay! I don't know why they hired a... Uh, I mean, I'm not against women secretaries in general, but, I mean, if you're going to... It doesn't really matter if you're a woman or a man. You should be a person with some serious gravitas and strength. And this, this woman... Does not look like a strong woman. I mean, she's a woman, right? This is a a, les a, a transgender woman. Am I, am, I, am I incorrect? No, it's a man. Ha! Oh, man, I thought it was a transgender woman. Wow. Nope. Nope. Well, all righty then. Uh, so I guess I, uh, I guess I, uh, I guess I dead named a heterosexual or a, 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 what do you call it? What, what is that pejorative phrase they use? Cis. What a disgusting phrase. Anybody uses that word cis in front of you, just... Just walk away from them. Don't associate with those people. They're violent. They're evil. Biden's defense choice is growing hairier and nastier by the day. Anti-Semite? Probably a check. Proven disastrous track record under Obama? Check. Meet the DNC's top choice to defend America. Colin Kale, patrician lad, Ivy League academic, entitled socialist. And the GOP is starting to figure out just how nasty this Biden pick really is. I don't know if I want to talk too much more about that. I just, it is what it is. That's the face. If you're watching the video version of this, that is the face of, of America's defense. Yeah. Yeah. Academic blue blood Ivy league academic. This is the very face of hate. This is what most of these SJW green Nazis look like. This is the face of green Nazism right here. This man right here. This is what most of these humans look like. At least one good thing about this whole thing. I know that they're trying to trigger a race war. I know that they want white people to hate black people and black people to hate white people. They literally want us to kill one another. They want the poors to kill one another. But I don't think it's going to work. And the reason I don't think it's work because your face, your face is all over this. This is white on white crime that's going on. This isn't black on white crime. Blacks are innocent. This is white on white crime. Remember that, folks. This isn't about black America. This is about patrician white America believing that middle class white America is such a threat to their security, to their advantage over the rest of us, that they are willing to murder us and have black people murder us. And hey, if we murder black people, that's no mind to them. They just want them all dead. They just want competition eliminated. And that's the face of it. That man believes that he is better than you in every way, shape, and form. That man, that man, this man right here, looks like he definitely has a past that maybe involves children in some sort of way. That little creepy old man that you'd never leave alone with your child. That's the face of Biden America. That's the face of the new United States government. That's the face of the DNC, CCP, the green shirt Nazis. Biden moves to end Yemeni resistance to the House of Saud. You know, this is the one good thing that they did. Well, not this part, but the initial part. They removed all the uh, uh, military and economic support. Well, surface, they're probably still doing stuff. They removed ostensibly the economic and military support of Saudi Arabia for, for Saudi Arabia's war against Yemen. But on the other side... Biden moves to end Yemeni resistance to the House of Saud. The U.S. has withdrawn support for the Saudi military in their war against Yemen, but continues to follow Trump's policy of supporting the House of Saud by targeting Yemeni leaders for economic confiscation from the U.S. Treasury. U.S. Treasury blacklist leaders of Yemen's Houthi movement. All right. One more story. There it is. 
Biden America signals token resistance to Master Z by signaling China can't have our university secrets. The mass mailer collective presidency known as the Biden is doing good dialectical work here, signaling to those who would doubt the fact that the Biden is a Chinese construct in whole and in part by making it allegedly difficult for China to steal tech from universities to use against American systems, uh, American citizens. So the U.S. has issued a statement encouraging colleges and universities to continue their crackdown on making sure that China doesn't get a hold of its tech. But of course, it's going to do that. It has to do something. It can't be totally pro-China, even though the United States of America, woke America that will murder you for saying the N-word, woke America that will destroy whole businesses because they 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 dead named a transgendered person woke america whose businesses won't do business in alabama because of transgender bathroom laws is doing gazillions of dollars of business with china that is literally murdering muslims murdering women just murdering everyone basically china is is hitler chairman z is adolf hitler personified and that 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 is the power that the DNC rests on. These hypocrites, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. They, they, they're not hypocrites to themselves because they don't have value. You have to have some value, some morality. They don't have morality. They have priest kingism. They believe in good and bad. Good is them, bad is everyone else. This is what Nietzsche said, you know, the poor. We poors, all, he, he, he didn't like the poors. Because he didn't like the poor. We came up with good and evil. He, he didn't like that whole construct of evil. He'd rather have good and bad because he was a fucking animal, too. That's another story. If you like Nietzsche, that's another story altogether. I mean, he fits right in with the DNC. That's for sure. Because they're adopting his kind of uh, strong man mentality. He who has the power makes the rules, sets the morality. We are not guided by a morality outside of ourselves, by a larger morality like a, like, a, like a king, like a Bill of Rights king that exists on paper and controls the powers that be. Outside of themselves, there is a power that we can access. They are stripping that away and returning the priest kingism to the lands. And they're following, they're following the China playbook almost to a T they are literally following they have gone back to 1968 and said how'd you do it how did you converse Chinese con culture to the sick perverse culture that you have today how did you become so successfully racist because because I know the Han race is the superior race uh, we're not saying it's not master but how because because we think that we can create a superior race here it's going to be called a POC the POC the POC we're going to lump all the non-whites into it. It's going to be controlled by blacks. Good luck with that, blacks. If and when they eliminate whites and you have a pock nation. Uh, good luck. Good luck competing black America with Hispanic and Asian America. They are going to destroy you. Because they have far more resources than you do. And it's not your fault. It's the fault of the white uh, citadelians. The same people behind all of this. The same ones manipulating all this are the same people that have had their foot on your neck for years, keeping you retarded, retarded in one place. You're locked in place. You've never developed hardly as a people since the 1960s because of Johnson, because of Nixon, because of all of the all of the all of the, the, the traitorous presidents that came after you. Even Ronald Reagan. Remember, Ronald Reagan signed amnesty for millions totally changing the balance of power in America with that act. And he also signed in 1986, he also signed uh, the uh, the gun law that uh, made uh, allegedly uh, uh, well, it was, it was, it was I, I can't remember the sp particulars of the gun law but the gun law was, uh, it was quite draconian and Reagan signed it. So remember that Reagan was controlled opposition. You've had nothing but controlled opposition the whole time Republican since probably since uh, Nixon. They're all on the same page. They've all been moving in the same place. And with the rise of China in the 90s, the success of the, uh, of the quasi-free socialist fascist market, that's what they want. All the other nation states of the world want what China's doing because they're like, hey, we could kill more people this way. 
And that's what nation states have always been around. Hey, this particular methodology will create better killers and will be able to control the the free-minded people. This is perfect because you're always going to have free-minded people. 10, 20% of us are going to be born generation after generation. You're never going to stomp us out. You're never going to end the free minds when they emerge. You're going to have to keep killing to keep them from discovering and sharing with others what liars, what piece of shit fucking liars you are. And there you go. That's the Daily Freedomist Show. This is the inaugural Daily Freedomist Show. Well, I hope you enjoyed it because I'm not sure that I did. I mean, I didn't enjoy the news stories, but I did enjoy delivering them. And then with that, I'm going to leave you. You have a great day.